In the headlines, President Buhari assures Nigerians of safety ahead of farming season as Muslim faithful across Nigeria observe Eid. Rescue operation continues as President Buhari urges collaboration to stop menace. Army couple killed on their way to Imo. And on the foreign scene, eight people killed in Philippines housing fire. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. And now the news in full. President Muhammad Buhari attended Eid prayers at the Mambila Barracks of Praying Grounds in Abuja. And it is the first Eid celebration after COVID-19 safety protocols were significantly relaxed. But the president did not take chances as he was fully kitted with face masks. And speaking after the prayers, the president assured Nigerians that government will continue to pull all stops to ensure that the country became more safe and secure the report. This Salah, the country has been freed from the stranglehold of COVID-19, which means more Nigerians who are at the various Eid praying grounds to offer supplications to Allah after a successful Ramadan fast. Even President Buhari would wander out of the safe confines of the presidential villa, accompanied by personal staff and close associates. His message to all Nigerians is that their country will become safer. Well, that we will continue to make the environment secure, especially when the rainy season is coming so that farmers can go back to their farms and uh, we wouldn't have a problem of food security. Heads of services, I mean Navy, Air Force, Inspector General of Police and so on, are very much aware of the situation and their duties to know where the uh, terrorists are and eliminate them. Since it's political season and a lot of aspirants have come to seek for his blessing, it is not out of place to wonder who is the president's preferred candidate. The person that Nigerians uh, elect. As the Muslim faithful celebrate Salah and offer their prayers to God, all Nigerians look forward to a safer and more prosperous nation. Kende Amudu. Trust TV News, Abuja. And Muslim Ummah have been called upon to be consistent in their worship to Allah instead of seasonal adoration during the holy month of Ramadan. The chief imam of Nashra Lai Fatih Society, Nasfat Imam Sharafuddin Ali Agon, made the call during a Salah sermon in Abuja. Take a look. Imam Sharafuddin Ali Agon further stressed the need for Nigerians to be their brother's keeper irrespective of ethnicity or religion, noting that this will help cement our relationship with Allah. We have completed Ramadan. The spirit of Ramadan must remain with us. The teachings and lessons and principles of Ramadan must remain with us. There are two things here. Whoever stopped doing what he was doing during Ramadan has actually worshipped Ramadan. The ulama sweet for steadfastness on the part of Muslim Ummah, adding that this will enable them enjoy Allah's blessing to the fullest. We all know insecurity has become order of the day. The first thing I want to say is that Allah is fully aware of our present situation in Nigeria. Except if there's anyone who can tell me Allah is not aware, Allah is not part of it. This is how Allah has designed it. We do not like it. The first thing is the government should do more. Government is not doing enough. They should do more. I'm not saying they are not doing anything. They should do more to protect life and properties for it's part of their major responsibilities as governors, as government. Some Nigerians emphasize the need to foster brotherliness among themselves and also adhere to what they learned during the month of Ramadan. It's just to tell our Muslim Umar that all the lessons that we engage in during Ramadan should not be something that we put a stop to. It should continue. Though fasting of this year has ended, all the ibadahs, the prayer, the tajud, the coming together, the assistance we render to the needies, the widows, 
we should continue with it. We should make sure that all of us gather together to assist ourselves. We should reach out like we did during fasting. The message is that we should learn a lot of lessons from the month and continue to live our life just, just that way. So the lesson is that what we have learned from Ramadan, we should not forget it. We should keep on the good things we have been doing during the month of Ramadan throughout the year and the life will be better for everybody. We should continue what we have done in the Ramadan because it's only Ramadan that we need to do good. Good is for all seasons and uh, the kindness that people showed and love should continue because if this is sustained, the country will be at peace and there will be growth in the country. The advice I have for everyone out there is they should keep serving Allah. After this Ramadan celebration, they should continue with everything they are doing, everything as an act of ibadah. They should just continue keeping. That is Allah bless them. Allah bless you. I wish them a happy Salah. Okay. And I also wish them that they should celebrate their Salah very well. And away from Salah celebration in the federal capital, Terry 3, thousands of Muslim faithful in Kano State have joined their counterparts across the world to mark the year's Eid al -Fitri. Trust TV's Idris Jabrin reports that residents expressed gratitude to God for witnessing yet another Salah period. The report. A special handshake by the Emir of Kano, al Haja Amina Adu Bayeru, and Governor Abdullahi Ganduji was closely followed by the two rakaat Eid prayer led by the chief imam of Kanu State, Professor Sani Zaharuddin. In his sermon, the chief imam called on Muslim faithfuls to use the Salah period in promoting peace, unity, and love among each other as a way of showing gratitude to God. <laughs> In his Salah message shortly after the Eid prayer, the Emir of Kanu al Haj Amina Ado Bayeru called on residents to continue to live in peace with one another regardless of their differences. My people, I urge you to remain peaceful. Peace is the most important aspect of our life. There is nothing we can do without peace. Therefore, I call on you to continue to live in peace with one another because that is the only way we will succeed. And we give thanks to Almighty Allah for showing us this wonderful day after a successful completion of the month of Ramadan. For Kano residents, the Eid celebration is unique, owing to current peace and stability in Kano. Today I am very happy. It is Salah, and as you can see, Everybody is moving around happily. I must give thanks to Almighty Allah. We have seen the end of Ramadan and everyone is happy. I'm actually very happy. Well, today is a very happy day. One of the most important thing is the peace we are enjoying in Kano. If you look at all, all around, you will see security operatives moving around. We even have DSS that are going around looking after one another, looking after people to make sure that things are going in order. So we are very happy and we give thanks to Allah that Kano is peaceful. Highlight of the Eid is the traditional Hawan Salah by the Emir, his district heads, and other traditional title holders. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. And now we move to Katina State, where the governor, Aminu Bello Masari, has called on Nigerians to elect leaders that are better than them. In a Salah message, the governor said the desire of his administration to ensure leaders who would come after them to do better uh, what they're doing now is his core mandate. And Governor Masari, after Eid prayer at Dunfordio Mosque, Modoji Katsina enjoyed the people of Katsina State to be patient with the administration since the security challenges being experienced are not peculiar to the state alone but to the country at large. He called on people to continue to pray to God for the security situation to improve. In a sermon, the chief Imam Mukhtar Jabrin had on the importance of generosity and closeness to God. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And in a disturbing development, no fewer than eight persons have been confirmed dead after a three-story building collapsed in the Butemeta area of Lagos State. The affected building, located at number 38 Ibadan Street along Herbert McCauley Way, went down on Sunday night. A mother and her child were among those recovered dead from the rubble. And the National Emergency Management Agency NEMA said on Monday that NEMA zonal coordinator in the southwest, Ibrahim Farinloye, who confirmed the, that this report revealed that 23 people have been rescued so far. Rescue efforts are still ongoing to recover those still trapped inside the debris. That the incident uh, started. So before information could get to any other person, it took us a long time. Uh, the people on the ground had been working immediately. The app, you know, the first responders at the immediate community and they worked very well. Presently, we are having about 23 uh, people recovered alive and more people are likely to be recovered at any moment from now. So, uh, like, what's the estimated number of persons in the building as at the time? The estimates, nobody can give estimates. It's a very large and long building. The information we had was that the ground floor was purely for warehouses, while second floor, third floor, second floor, part of second floor was also, I mean, first floor was also part of a warehouse, second floor, literally human beings. And the Nigerian army surgeon A.M. Linus and his wife have been killed on their way to Imo State on Saturday. And details of the attack were not clear as a press, at this press time, but Daily Trust gathered that they were targeted because they were military personnel. The incident is the latest in the attacks on security operators in the southeast. The proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB and Eastern Security Network, ESN, each armed wing have been blamed for the widespread attacks in the region. And moving on, troops from the multi-nation multi -nation task force are sectors 3 and 4 of Nigeria and Niger Republic have neutralized at least 20 Boko Haram terrorists. The task force codenamed Malam Fatori Damas Damasak at forward operation base uh, raided the terrorist strongholds in the vicinity of Tumbun Rogu and 12 AK-47 rifles, one mortar 60 mm and large caches of ammunition of different calibers were recovered during the raid. While carefully concealed five gun trucks and a truck laden with supplies meant for the criminals were destroyed. Also, an MRAP fighting vehicle, which was scattered away from the Nigerian army position in the past, was recovered by the troops. Meanwhile, troops of the multination Joint Tax Force Sector 1 from Cameroon neutralized two Boko Haram logisticians and recovered two motorcycles. You're still watching Trust TV News updates coming up after the break. We'll take a look at Lagos residents lamenting the hike in price of solar clothes. Do stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching the news update on Trust Television. Before the rest of the news, let's take a look at our headlines again. We told you that President Mohamed Buhari assures Nigerians of safety ahead of firming season as Muslim faithful across Nigeria observe Eid. And the rescue operation continues as President Buhari orders collaboration to stop menace. And moving on to more news, a public affairs analyst, Sumaila Musa, has acquired the rising cost of commodities, adding that ordinary Nigerians continue to bear the effects of inflation and insecurity. Speaking on Trust TV's breakfast show, Daybreak, Musa identified poverty, inflation and insecurity as reasons why it is difficult to convince Nigerians to vote their conscience and not sell their votes. He added that unless these problems are addressed, it will be difficult to convince the masses to think of their future rather than the present. When a man is hungry, then he becomes wild. To tame him not to go into criminality becomes a difficult thing. So when hunger is taken care of, then whatever you're trying to summonize into the areas of people begins to sink in. You know, other than when people are hungry, mm. they become very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, brutish. They become, uh, uh, you know, very terrible set of human beings. They don't want to listen. Lawlessness prevail because, you see, someone is telling you, but I've not eaten. And that's why electionary is just around the corner. Mm. The people who are hungry, who you are telling not to go and collect peanuts from politicians, what's the alternative that you've provided? You're talking about, oh, don't mortgage your future. But he's talking about, I just, I even want to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I have not eaten for the past mm -hmm. two days. So it's don't about tell survival me. First. It's about survival <laughs> first. Don't tell me about that future because it's not guaranteed. But I'm hungry now. I'm giving 2,000 naira to go vote. I need to eat. So really, that is, should, it should be one of the major sources of concern. And issues of insecurity, academic staff union of universities, ASU strike, good governance and the 2023 general elections took center stage during the May Day celebration in Kaduna. Speaking at separate fora during the celebration, the Kaduna State Chairman of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayuba Suleiman, and the Trade Union Congress Chairman Abdullahi Domfulani used the event to highlight some of the challenges facing workers in the state with a view to getting government to address them. Former Senator Shea Uzani lamented the deteriorating state of insecurity in Kaduna and called on the labor unions to use your number to effect the desired change in 2023. In the recent past, an attempt by the state government to take away our hard and freedom of association as guaranteed by the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria through the distribution of form to our members to choose whether to belong to trade unions or either to pay check up dues has been defeated. The ongoing economic uncertainty, job losses are increasing in geometric manners and factories are closing shops. Debt of forex scarcity, high rate of insecurity in the land, to a level that today in Nigeria, hardly 20% of the 200 of over 200 million Nigerians can sleep with their eyes with their two eyes closed. And this is a leader, a leader that will unite a polarized nation, a leader that will deliver our people out of the hands of terrorists and bandits. A leader that will end the malice that we face as a people and it's only possible when we elect people who have by their utterances conduct legacy and stewardship stand on the side of the nigerian worker in another development some residents of lagos have been lamenting the high cost of cellular clothes and other items needed to make the Sandler celebration memorable. Abbas Ibrahim reports that some retailers are blaming the hike in the price of the high rate of dollar and the lack of price control. Here's the report. While Muslims around the globe purchase new clothes for Eid al-Fitri celebration for themselves, their kids and loved ones, many are not happy doing so due to the increase 
in price. Malam Tasu Munkaila wanted to buy three sets for each of his children, but end up with one each. In Agu Duba Kain, and Musa Kaya, Kaya Mukai, the Masakayan Salah, Kuma, Mutada Lamarin, Abundi, Yaba Yanabama, Mikey, for the legacy. He said he was surprised by the increase in the price. The Mukasan Kayan, a shaker and Jay, I chance, and Oxenshi, a Jay, I chance, a Kayan, ya, Prashi, a house, who say he pays the money. Salah outfits, they are very beautiful, very beautiful. The, the price is reasonable but then a little bit high. It's either it remains like this or it comes down. We don't pray for it to go up. Let me say thirty thousand last price. Thirty thousand is fine. Oh, okay. Today I show one. Okay. Ah, what you want? Oh, she said one thing now. She said she purchased one set of gown at the rate of thirty thousand naira. She said she purchased one set of gown at the rate of thirty thousand naira. Though it is beautiful, she said, but the price is much compared to few years back. Alaji Nasir Gulma is a dealer of unisex clothing materials. He attributes the increase to the rates of dollar to Naira. The problem we have in this country is uh, we don't have control of price. Uh, if you look now, dollar is almost 600 Naira. If dollar will come 600 Naira in a, in a year, dollar will add getting to 100 and something Naira. I think it's a shame to our low country. Uh, all our leaders, but uh, all I know is uh, nobody is going. CBN is not allowed to give us a uh, dollar uh, in official rate. We have to go inside black market and buy our dollar so that we we'll go and purchase the goods. Uh, Nasir Gulma are traders to reduce their prices in order to enjoy the blessing of the month of Ramadan. I'm advising uh, my colleagues. Uh, Traders, that we should be very careful. I uh, think in this month of Ramadan, people must come and buy uh, and buy uh, uh, good for their family, so that we we'll make the, the 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 good go high, so that we we'll get uh, more profit. I think it's very bad. Very bad. It's not the teaching of Islam. When we say we are in the month of Ramadan, and uh, we want God to bless us, I think we have to do something that God can look at us in our heart and bless us. Abbas Ibrahim Alibi, Trust TV, Lagos. And in business news, the International Monetary Fund has projected that Nigeria's consumer price index will hit 16.1% in 2022. This projection was presented in a table illustration in the IMF's Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan African, which was published on its website. The projected 16.1% will be the highest in the country since October 2021, when it was 16.63%. Recent figures from the National Bureau of Statistics show that Nigeria's consumer price index rose to 15.92% in the month of March. And on the foreign scene, eight people have died, including six children, after a fire tore through scores of homes near the Philippines' capital, Manila. According to local officials, the blaze, which started around 500 local time on Monday, also destroyed 80 homes. It started on the second floor of a house in a crowded settlement inside the sprawling campus of the University of Philippines in Quezon City, and the cause of the place is unknown. Senior Fire Officer Greg Bichadia told AFP News Agency that it took nearly two hours to extinguish the blaze. And finally, in sports, of FIFA sanctions Eagles to play behind closed doors barely a month after Nigerian football followers invaded the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, during Super Eagles versus Ghana 2022 World Cup playoff match and damaged some facilities. The world football umpire FIFA has punished Nigeria with various sanctions. FIFA on Monday ordered Nigeria to play their next home game, which is a 2023 African Cup of Nations African qualifier against Sierra Leone behind closed doors and fined the country 63 million naira for the trouble their fans caused after their World Cup playoff clash against Ghana. 
With these sanctions, the Super Eagles' next home game, which is a 2023 African Cup of Nations qualifier against Sierra Leone in June, will have no fans in attendance. However, they can welcome fans back from their next home game against Sao Tome or Mauritius. And that brings us to the end of the news update at this hour. For more updates, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and Barakat Salah.